Welcome to a new video where I am going to talk to you about everything to do with riding the Amplicurt bike. What's it really like? I'm going to answer some of your questions and we're doing that down in the Liverpool docks where the sun is shining. Actually, it's really helpful is what it's like. It doesn't take over, so there is still some effort on your part. You've still got a cycle. But let me tell you, it is a lot, lot easier when you've got that pedal assist going up the hills. I ride my bike to work a lot, and one of the things that I don't want to do is turn up to the office all sweaty, which is what used to happen if I'd ride my road bike. The cool thing about this is you get that workout, your heart rate gets going, but because of that pedal assist, I don't turn up all kinds of sweat. It's actually pretty agile, pretty good over the hills. I quite like that. Maybe do a smoother one. <laughs> I really like it with a single gear at the back. It's brilliant around town. You can, however, go to the website. When you spec out your bike, you can choose the Kurt with the optional gears at the back. I think it's 10. Um, eight or 10 gears you can get at the back. I deliberately didn't want that because I really, really like two things about this bike. I like the fact it's single gear because it's great around town and for commuting. Less to break, it's much more simple. And two, I really, really like the carbon drive that for me is an awesome awesome feature no hassle no maintenance it's quieter just an awful lot easier so i really like the spec the way it is the question then becomes what's it like riding around town well for a commuter bike it's got to be lightweight it's got to be strong and it's got to be agile and i find that actually this bike's pretty good at all of those things it's super agile you know like any bike maneuvers quite well the, the response is great you don't feel unsafe on it that's for sure is it lightweight it's probably about the same weight as my mountain bike I've got a cube mountain bike probably about the same sort of weight as that this they say that I've not actually weighed it myself but it comes in around 14 kilograms it's pretty easy to pick up it's easy enough to throw on your shoulder walk it up the stairs up the ramps no problem at all I find it's it's easy enough to do that with uh, no problem whatsoever the other really cool thing about this bike and one of the things I think is different between this and the Hawk one of the upgrades the brake to me feel a lot better on this bike than they did on the Hawk so I'm gonna look at why that is but this thing stops on a dime which is really helpful when you're riding around town because people do walk out in front of you or cars will you know pull out in front of you and you have to stop very quickly almost every time you ride it. And if you've got it spec'd out so you're going, you know, the extra 25 kilometers per hour, or if you've souped it up so it goes to 35, then you really need to be able to stop quickly, right? So the brakes on this thing are insane. One of the modifications I made to the Hawk, which I really, really liked, and I'm gonna recommend, is the use of a GoPro Hero. Now, I just got a rear camera mount for the seat here, and I put the GoPro, it's just one of the Hero sessions in there, and obviously I can set it to record everything that it sees, which is useful on the streets of Liverpool. With it being a GoPro, you can connect it to the camera via its inbuilt Wi-Fi. So if I put my phone on here, just using my quad lock, what I've got as I'm cycling is I have a live picture of what is behind me, which is just fantastic, right? So I can see without turning around all the time what's behind me, which is cool because on the Ampla bike you are pedaling so fast you haven't got time to look behind you. The only downside to this little thing um, is because of the way the camera is and the way it displays on the phone, the image is absolutely flipped. When it looks like you've got cars coming on this side on your phone, they're actually coming on that side. So you just have to remember that, but that's kind of straightforward and easy. Try it out, see how you get on. One of the things I really like about this bike is you can ride it slowly as well as quickly, which is useful if you're riding it in a pedestrianized area like this. Obviously, you can't ride that quickly. Because it's got the single gear, you need that boost to be able to easily 
maneuver and get that little burst of speed every now and again. So riding it slowly is super, super easy. And I actually quite like just coming down here on my bike between locations. It's a bit more messy with pedestrians, but it's just a really nice area of Liverpool. One of the key questions that I get asked all the time about this bike is, does it have a throttle? So there are some electric bikes that I've ridden where you get a throttle on the handlebars. Now I know I've got this on here, but that's, that's not a throttle, that's to do with the indicator on my helmet. Uh, but it doesn't have a throttle at all. There are electric bikes you can get where there is something with your thumb and you can control the speed with your thumb. So the bike will move even though you're not pedaling. That's not what this bike does. It uses pedal assist, in other words, you have to pedal for this bike to give you that little electric boost. So let me show you this, right? If I just lift that up, watch what happens when I turn this pedal just a little bit, right? See that? The wheel just takes off. And that's where the pedal assist comes in. So you, you only have to pedal a little bit and this thing really gives you that sort of burst of speed. And that comes from the motor which is here in the hub. Uh, which is fed by the batteries which are in the frame so it doesn't look like an electric bike uh, but the batteries feed the motor and it's all done through pedal assist no throttles if you're looking for an electric bike that looks good but that you can just control with a button this my friend is not the bike for you if you like the fact that you are actually pedaling and you get it you know your heart rate does go up it's not like it's totally lazy but you're just looking for that little bit of a boost to help you around town this is what that bike is built for so the only way to tell that this bike is an electric bike, I think is by this here. That is the only clue to what's going on because obviously you can't see the battery, it just looks like it's part of the frame. And I guess if you really knew what you were looking at with this back hub, you might think there's something a little bit different about it, but you're not quite sure what it is. But other than that, this just looks like an ordinary commuter bike. I say ordinary, it's actually quite a beautiful, stunning bike. I really love the design. Now that is super helpful when you're locking it up in town because people don't look at it and think, man, that is an electric bike. It's going to be worth a few bucks, so I'm going to steal it and off we go. The cool thing is it blends in and I really like that. As long as I've had my Ampler bike and I've been cycling this Kurt bike around now for at least a month, you never get any bother with it. No one ever bothers with it. No one ever looks at it and goes, oh, thank you very much. I'll have that. So another question you get asked is how long does the battery actually last for on the bike? And I don't actually know is the answer because I've never ridden far enough to get it where it's worn completely out. And I cycle probably seven miles to work and seven miles back, which is probably about, what, 10K, so it's 20K round trip. Ampler say that the battery's good for about 70 kilometers. I never get to the place, you know, where, where I've tied that out because I'm just using it for commuting. So it does me super, super well, actually, really, really well. And so sometimes I'll charge it every time I finish cycling with it, sometimes I forget but there'll still be enough charge in it to do quite a few cycles so the battery for me lasts a really really long time of course the weather today in Liverpool is absolutely stunning but if you know England you will know that the weather is not always like this and this is in fact a rarity what's this thing actually like to cycle in bad weather so in the wind and in the rain when it's windy of course cycling can be horrific especially if the wind is against you and you know you've ever had that feeling where you're you're pedaling but not really getting anywhere. That's where, again, you notice the battery boost come in. Just brilliant, actually, really helps cycling in the wind, really makes that an awful lot easier. When it comes to choosing your Ampler bike, getting the right frame size is obviously gonna be important. Now, I'm 180 centimeters tall, or five foot 11 in old money, um, and I have the medium frame, which is the frame they recommend for my size. Perfect, perfect fit frame. It does come in a large, and I think, actually, they also now do it in a small. The other thing about the bike, uh, as well as changing the spec on the gears, you can add gears to it, you can have the normal change if, chain if you like, uh, choosing the right frame size, but they also now come in different colors. I just am a really big, big, big fan of the black bike. So what do I actually think of the Ampler bike, the Ampler Kurt? Do I like it? Absolutely, lutely I absolutely fell in love with the Hawk when I got the Hawk. I have to be honest with you, I was a bit nervous when I was ordering the Hawk because Ampler was a new company. Um, I'd never heard of them. There was no real reviews about what it was that they'd done. And the bikes, I mean, although they're cheap for an electric bike, they're just not cheap, are they? And so I was very nervous about buying the bike. Mm -hmm. 
especially because when I ordered it there was like a four month delay after I'd ordered it as well so didn't inspire me and fill me with confidence if I'm honest but every interaction I have had with them, every interaction I've had with the company has been nothing short of fantastic they've got great customer service they always respond to every email that I write with more information than I actually asked for um, so the guys are great and that built my confidence and then the hawk arrived we shot those ori original videos on YouTube and I just fell in love with it am I as in love with the Kurt as I was with the hawk yes I absolutely am they have made some really great changes to the bike some of them are really subtle it kind of just glides nicer I don't know how to explain it. it glides a little bit better than the hawk the ratio on the gears is a little bit different and so you feel like you're going slightly faster when you're cruising and um, the brakes whoa, amazing the brakes uh, to the point where I'd probably if I had a hawk I think actually I might want to upgrade them um, a little bit but they've retained the agility they've retained the looks and the strength which made the hawk great they took everything that made the hawk great and tweaked it a little bit and actually improved it the only thing that I'm not a big fan of if I'm honest is the name but hey ho you know what I can live with that I might just keep calling this a hawk should you go and get one if you're looking for a pedal assist electric bike to commute with I can't recommend it highly enough because this thing is just it's just a joy to ride uh, it's just great fun you're never disappointed when you get off it you do get to top speed pretty quickly and you if you're like me, you've always got this thing going, I wish it would just go a little bit faster. But of course, it is capped because of EU law. I mean, it goes plenty fast enough. It gets me from A to B super, super, super quickly. Uh, and like I said earlier, I'm not sweating when I get to the office, which is important. And I feel like I've got a bit of a workout and it's healthier and kind of for the environment than driving my car. It's a win-win all round. So any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my level best to answer them. But verdict, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Like I said, there are a few things which I think they could do to improve it. I can't wait to see version 3.0, but this thing is immense and I'm absolutely in love with it. So if you want to know more about this amazing piece of machinery, uh, if you want to spec out your own, check out amplabikes.com. If you've got any specific technical questions, just email the guys at Ampla. They're pretty good at coming back to you and answering those questions and you can spec it out, play with the different frame sizes, play with the different colors, the different accessories, all at amplabikes.com. They've even got different frame types if you're not that keen on this type of thing. But I just love it. Uh, this, is, this is the bike of choice for me. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video